For the latest in strategic affairs, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the bell icon for updates. Last week, the Cabinet Committee on Security has reportedly finally cleared the ambitious Trans Arunachal Highway to connect the eastern part of Arunachal Pradesh to its western periphery bordering Bhutan. What are the implications of this Trans Arunachal Highway along the line of actual control or the McMahon line as it is known in the eastern Indian uh, sector? And what are the other road and infrastructure projects that are enabling the Indian Army and the Indian Air Force to strengthen India's defences along that frontier is the topic of this week's Ask Nitin. I am Nitin Gokhale. Many of you will recall that in September 2021, more than a year ago, me and my team had travelled extensively in eastern Arunachal Pradesh, bordering China and Myanmar and brought you reports from the ground about infrastructure development and the Indian Army's plans to defend and of course uh, take on the Chinese if they try any misadventure in that sector. Taking that issue further, today I want to focus on what is happening as far as infrastructure projects in Arunachal Pradesh, uh, which is bordering, as you know, Tibet and uh, also is a very sensitive state, border state, uh, which uh, gives India the ability to uh, take on the Chinese in the high Himalayas and, of course, uh, make sure that uh, the Chinese don't try uh, anything uh, which can be construed as an aggressive action in that sector. But to do all that, India needs excellent infrastructure because the terrain in Arunachal Pradesh is one of the toughest in the world. And that's where the road engineers, the border roads organization and the Ministry of Road Transport and Highways is making a difference. What they are trying to do is to build roads which go from east to west as far as uh, Arunachal Pradesh is concerned and also roads that uh, lead uh, into different valleys that uh, divide Arunachal Pradesh, which is a vast 83,000 square kilometer large area uh, that this state has, uh, which is largely inhabited uh, sparsely by a, a population that is not very large and therefore uh, mostly defended by the Indian Army and the Indian Air Force in that area. Let's look at what is this Trans Arunachal Highway or the Arunachal Frontier Highway that the government has uh, mooted. It's going to connect the, uh, as I mentioned, passing through the entire uh, length of uh, laterally uh, of Arunachal Pradesh, which divides Arunachal Pradesh in the two parts, the upper two-third in the north and the east and the lower one-third. And the 1811 kilometer long highway it's going to be one of the toughest uh, road construction ever done anywhere in the world. It starts from India's northernmost military post north of the Hatungla Ridge in Tawang uh, and goes through Zemithang, which is uh, the place from where the Dalai Lama had entered India in 1959. Uh, comes through Tawang, Bomdila, goes to Sepa. Uh, then finally ends up in Dibang Valley District, uh, sort of goes through the Dibang Valley District and finally ends up at Kanubari, uh, bordering Assam and the Bogiville Bridge, which has come up uh, over the past uh, three years, connecting Assam and Arunachal Pradesh. Now, it helps reducing the isolation between different tribes in Arunachal Pradesh, living uh, quite apart in the east and the west. But more than that, it helps the Indian military move its forces from either west to east or east to west or in the different valleys uh, that are uh, the mainstay of Arunachal Pradesh in terms of geography. But uh, this is not something uh, which is new, which is, uh, this has been in the making or this has been in the planning stage for some time. I want to give you a little bit of history of uh, this Arunachal Frontier Highway, when was it mooted, when was it planned, 
that is uh, needed to be understood first before we talk about its importance. Now, this Arunachal uh, uh, Highway or the Frontier Highway was first actually mooted in 2008 after India changed its policy of uh, not building roads in the border areas where earlier it was feared that the Chinese would use those roads to come into uh, the Indian state of Arunachal Pradesh as well as come down to Assam. But 60 years later, the Trans-Arunachal Highway has been sanctioned. The then Chief Engineer of Arunachal Pradesh, uh, PWD, actually made out a plan, uh, mapped out the entire road and submitted this proposal to the Governor of Arunachal Pradesh that time uh, and uh, said that this must be made, this is the uh, expenses uh, that will be required. And uh, the toughness of the terrain was also mentioned in this note which we are now showing you on the screen. But because of lack of funds, because of lack of initiative, uh, this plan never went anywhere. It was on paper, it remained on paper for a number of years. It was only in 2014, six years later, the then uh, Minister of State for uh, Home Affairs, Kiran Rijiju, who hails from Arunachal Pradesh, actually uh, took it up as uh, somebody who was looking after the internal security of uh, India as part of the uh, Ministry of Home Affairs and uh, started pushing it in the government that this Trans-Arunachal Highway must be uh, made, uh, made and made operational for the benefit of the people as well as the uh, Indian military. It started taking shape. It took again a lot of uh, effort to get environmental clearances, coordination amongst uh, the various agencies of the central and the state governments and also some realignment, some tweaking of the entire uh, road alignment uh, took place and it has now taken almost eight years for this road to be finally sanctioned and the funds to be allotted to it. Something like 40,000 crores will be needed to build this road is one estimate and uh, this is not going to happen in a hurry. This road might take up to a decade to be finally completed. Although some parts of it have already been done. This uh, actually includes existing uh, that 1811 kilometer route which comprises National Highway 13 the parts of National Highway 15, parts of uh, National Highway 215 and the State Highway 25. These are all in uh, various stages of construction, two lane highways uh, passing through 16 districts of Arunachal Pradesh. As I said, it runs from LAC in Tawang uh, and to uh, Kanubari in southeast at the tri-junction of uh, Assam, Nagaland, Arunachal Pradesh border, which is nearing the, near the Mon district of Nagaland. So it comes all the way from Tawang or even uh, further than Tawang and comes goes along the McMahon line and comes down to the tri-junction where the three states uh, have a border, common border. Now, as I said, three things happen. This is strategically important for movement of troops, both by road and uh, by air sometimes if required and it, uh, this highway will also connect some of these ALGs, the advanced landing grounds that have been made over the past uh, 15 years or so by the Indian Air Force. Seven of them at various places, Pasi, Pasighat, Teju, uh, Mechuka, uh, you name all, the, all of these, Walong, all these will be uh, connected by this uh, Arunachal uh, Frontier Highway. But uh, in the meantime, there are these vertical roads going through uh, various valleys uh, connecting various parts of uh, plains of Assam and going uh, and joining this uh, Trans Arunachal Highway is what is going to happen. As, uh, as we see, I am going to show you on the map, there are various uh, roads in various stages of construction and progress. The first is uh, to your uh, left as you see the screen, Thelamara Tawang Nelia Highway, uh, which uh, is a 402 kilometer long highway connecting uh, these places as you can see on the map and it also has a parallel track to what is called the BCT road, the Balipara, Chardwar, Tenga road and the OKSRT OK road which goes right along the uh, Bhutan border, Bhutan Assam border or Bhutan Arunachal border rather uh, along the Sakteng wildlife sanctuary. Many of you will recall two years ago I had spoken about uh, the uh, importance of the OK SRT road, the uh, Orang, uh, Kalaktang, 
Shergaon Tenga Road, which goes parallel to the uh, Bhutan uh, border, and the Sakteng Wildlife, Wildlife Sanctuary. The Sakteng Wildlife Sanctuary has been claimed by China as one of its own areas in its border dispute with Bhutan. That is why this road is important, and therefore. Uh, the uh, completion of this road will make uh, the Indian Army uh, more assured about uh, where it can do the movement of the troops uh, when it goes from south to north. While the Arunachal Trans Highway uh, is uh, going from uh, west to east or east to west, uh, whatever direction you want to talk about, this, these roads uh, which I am talking about now, the Thelamara Tawang Nelia Highway for instance, or the Itakhola Pake Kesang Sepa and uh, Parsi Parlo Highway go from south to north, connecting the farthest points along the McMahon line. Uh, it goes through uh, the Pake Tiger Reserve, Arunachal Pradesh, the uh, Sepa headquarter of East Kaming District, the second one that I mentioned, the Itakhola Parsi Parlo Road. There is also the Gogamuk Taliha Tato Highway, which connects uh, Dapu Rijo uh, headquarter of Upper Subar Siri District and Tato, which is northeast of uh, Taliha. Now, these are important small places, but very important places, crucial for defense of Arunachal Pradesh, for defense of India, and for the military, for having its bases. The military already has uh, bases around these areas, but it needs connectivity. And these roads are giving that option to the Indian military to travel by road, the Indian Army particularly. While uh, today the air connectivity or the airlift capability of the Indian Air Force allows the Indian forces to be uh, staged forward uh, closer to the uh, McMahon line, these roads will enable the troops to go there. The equipment like uh, artillery guns and uh, armored personnel carriers if required in some of the areas, not so much in Arunachal Pradesh but Sikkim which we will talk about uh, where there was a dispute uh, in Dolam in 2017. Uh, there is also the, uh, as I mentioned, uh, these three roads I have already mentioned. Then there is the Akajan Georging Pango Highway, which uh, again goes uh, into the valleys. And then there is the Pasighat uh, Bishing Highway. But apart from all these roads uh, which uh, are shown to you on the map, there is the crucial Sela Pass, which is about 2.5 kilometers long uh, at the height of about 13,700 uh, feet, uh, which is going to become an all-weather uh, connectivity between the plains of Assam from Tejpur or Bhalukpung to Tawang via uh, Sela uh, going into Tenga and then going to Bomdila and further. Now, Sela Pass has been the bottleneck. It closes down during the winter, uh, during these months and then uh, it just uh, doesn't have the connectivity to Tawang which is an important uh, what is called the center of gravity as far as India-China dispute is concerned because Tawang has the oldest Buddhist monastery, uh, second oldest Buddhist monastery in Asia and uh, China claims Tawang to be part of South Tibet. So therefore, uh, Tawang needs to be strengthened, it needs to be defended very well and uh, therefore these roads, these ALGs are extremely important. Now you are going to get, once the Sela Pass is done, it becomes an all-weather road between uh, Tejpur and Tawang. There are two or three alternatives that uh, Indian Army is going to get. I mentioned the BCT road, the OKSRT road, uh, which goes through Tenga. Uh, the Sela Pass, once it becomes an all-weather uh, uh, tunnel, uh, then it becomes uh, important for uh, the Indian Army to travel between Tawang and Tejpur and, and then go east and west whenever required. Therefore, uh, it is uh, something that uh, must be welcome, this uh, new uh, Trans Arunachal Highway. Uh, this is uh, has been sanctioned by the government. Uh, in October 2022, that's just uh, two months ago, a 1458 kilometer long route was complete and already operational uh, in that area from Tawang to Kanubari. Uh, the uh, completion target date is 2024. So, now you can imagine parts of all this have been constructed in uh, various parts, but the connectivity, the full connectivity has to come through and therefore uh, then it will be called the Trans Arunachal Highway. At various places these roads are being constructed. It is very difficult to construct roads in these uh, diff uh, very tough terrains. Uh, you can see uh, the Border Roads Organization, uh, the contractors of the Ministry of uh, Road Transport and Highways working there. 
uh, it's not easy it's cold it's uh, at an altitude uh, it's not easy to reach uh, but the indian air force the bro the uh, morth all of them are uh, working together uh, various innovative methods are being used uh, new machinery has come in state of the art machinery to dig through uh, tough mountains uh, also uh, rock cutting uh, making the alignment correct all that is being done as far as uh, the uh, roads in arunachal pradesh are concerned now this uh, provides as i said there are the six vertical and diagonal national highway corridors uh, they all total up to about 2000 plus kilometers uh, the the roads that i mentioned for instance the thelamara tawang nelia highway or the pasighat bishing highway they all connect to the horizontal road they connect laterally like this vertically from south to north which means every valley in arunachal pradesh there are more than uh, half a dozen valleys uh, which are not interconnected so far will get interconnected and that will enable uh, swifter movement relocation of troops um, induction of troops uh, much faster and if you go back to some of the videos we did in uh, september 2021 you will realize that today the indian army is dependent on uh, the airlift of these troops to the the farthest point near the macmohan line once these roads come through once these roads are operational then the troops can move by road it's not easy movement but it at least has an option uh, apart from the airlift now this is a big change from what it was say even up to 2008 as i mentioned to you up to 2008 the government used to say that uh, arunachal pradesh uh, roads should not be developed lest they are used by uh, the advancing chinese troops uh, to come into uh, parts of arunachal pradesh and then come down to assam which is uh, in the plains but that policy changed in 2007 8 and then subsequently all these plans uh, were made but the plans were always on paper it is slowly from 2009 10 and then accelerated way from 2014 onwards these highways have been uh, cleared one by one for uh, or sanctioned uh, funds one by one to make this road network extensive road network in the crucial state of arunachal pradesh we have spoken a lot about arunachal pradesh earlier too uh, when it became a state uh, in uh, 1987 uh, why it was important it used to be called nefa remember the northeast frontier uh, agency in uh, earlier years but uh, today Arunachal Pradesh is the most important uh, frontier as far as uh, the eastern sector of the India China dispute is concerned that's where we are at the moment uh, i am looking at some of the questions that have come in uh, i am going to uh, read one of them our uh, viewers are reluctant to join on screen it seems but the even written questions are important and i have couple of them i think uh, which have been asked and let me uh, come to those questions one by one and answer uh the queries that are there so uh taking up the questions kanika rathi has uh, asked how have these roads and infrastructure projects helped india in recent years to connect it to the lac could you please put some light on it now how it has helped i have already explained i think in this program but let me emphasize again that uh, without roads and infrastructure uh the indian army movements are sluggish they are slow they are also time consuming in the uh, mountains now china has taken a lead over india over the past uh, 20 years it has uh, built infrastructure in a very fast manner in tibet it has also created uh, habitats for its troops in the plains of tibet uh, at the height of uh, that uh, area which uh, the, the chinese have occupied since uh, 1950 and they have taken a head start over india but if you have to really you know take the look at the positive side it's better late than never as i said till 2008 9 india was constantly saying let's not build roads let's not build infrastructure lest it is used by the adversary fortunately that mindset has changed and uh, of course uh, the acceleration of projects building the projects roads tunnels bridges habitats uh, has also taken place but it requires money it requires implementation it requires time because uh, in arunachal pradesh unlike ladakh uh, heavy monsoon rains prevent uh, the all round or all year round uh, construction of roads uh, six months nearly 
there cannot be any road building activity and therefore uh, the slow pace of uh, infrastructure development there that's uh, something that we must keep in mind uh, when we talk about the uh, construction and the slow pace of construction there of course procedural delays uh, inter agency uh, delays all that has also uh, dogged these uh, infrastructure projects but fortunately now there is a better coordination uh, better understanding and also a better realization that without these roads india cannot defend uh, any chinese aggression in that area that's why these infrastructure projects are important uh, there are uh, i'm sure there are questions and there will be comments at the end of the program we will take them up uh, whenever we get an, another opportunity to talk about all this but for the moment let me just tell you that uh, this program intends to give you information that uh, not necessarily is available in the public domain uh, i uh, was fortunate to travel to these areas a number of times when i was stationed in the northeast uh, between 1983 and 2006 and subsequently every time i have gone there i have seen progress uh, there was uh, one trip i made i remember in 2012 exactly 10 years ago when the road condition was terrible because uh, from a single lane highway between tejpur and tawang uh, the road was being made into a double lane highway and uh, therefore there was chaos there was uh, uh, utter uh, i would say uh, total uh, disruption of traffic and roads uh, you can see some of the photographs here uh, there is to be lands and mind you this area is also prone to landslides and therefore uh, there are problems of construction of staying there of getting the right manpower and getting all the right machinery to those areas fortunately over the past 10 years since 2012 when i went uh, to western arunachal pradesh i went to eastern arunachal pradesh in 2021 but western arunachal pradesh i have to revisit which i hope to do in 2023 early 2023 very soon uh, has also shown a lot of progress the sela tunnel for instance Uh, has uh, shown progress and it should be completed uh, very soon within about 6 or 7 months uh, according to uh, the progress report that has come in so therefore uh, there are uh, good signs of uh, what is happening along the border but we have a long way to go before catching up with the chinese that's all i have in this program this week uh, do keep watching strat news global and of course uh, keep writing to us and we will uh, bring you more on the ground reports Uh, reports from uh, the uh, frontiers uh, which are difficult to reach but are also uh, generators of a lot of uh, information and a lot of stories that all of you will like that's the usp of strat news global so keep watching ask nitin as well as strat news global for the time being it's goodbye